Hey, y'all, and welcome to Trials to Triumphs. I'm Ashley Blaine Featherston Jenkins, but you can call me ABFJ. This week, Grammy Award-winning singer Samara Joy talks to me about finding balance and rest in the mountaintop moments. Samara Joy accomplished a major milestone when she was awarded Best New Artist at the 2023 Grammys. But just two months later, she discovered that new levels of success require establishing a new pace. February was the Grammys, and by April, I was like, yeah, I need to stop because... You know, I'm feeling the fatigue in my body, in my mind, in my voice. Like, I'm just like, I'm not a machine. You know, I can't, I can't just go like this. I'm able now to look at next year and be like, okay, we can take a moderate step back. I'm not saying stop or take a year off or anything like that, but really just make sure that there's balance. Welcome to the pod you. (laughs) I am so excited to have you. And I just got word, okay, that you just got nominated for a Grammy for Best Jazz Performance over the weekend, which was also your birthday weekend, for a single you self-produced. Can we get into it? (laughs) (laughs) It's been a pretty busy one. It's been a pretty busy one. Okay, but like, Truthfully, how are you feeling? It was your, I mean, what a convergence of a weekend for you. I know. And you know, it's crazy. I um, was doing a lot of touristy things uh, for my birthday. We were in Paris and I just Mm. wanted to walk around. I wanted to take in the sights. Um, And there was this church that we were staying near called the Sacre Coeur. And apparently it has the best view of Paris, but you have to go up 292 steps to get to it. Wow. And so literally it was like, let's just go for it. You know, it's a little rainy, but let's just go for it. So we're walking up these 292 steps. Soon as we get to the top, we're like, oh my gosh, this view is so beautiful. And then we all get a message like, tight, just got nominated for a grant. I was like, oh, oh. <laughs> I was, I mean, I had so much leg pain, but it was worth it. It was wow. worth it. Wow. moment, the mountaintop moment for real. Listen, <laughs> Your legs might get tired, but when you get to the top, there is a blessing for you up there. Oh, that'll preach. That'll preach. That, will preach. that is the message for me because you you could have been like, y'all, nah, I don't want to do it. But something inside of you was like, you know what? It'll be worth it. And it was more than worth it. You thought you thought you were just getting a view of Paris and look at what else you got. You mm. know, praise them. Mm, 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 mm. <laughs> So much good stuff. So much. Wow. 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 Well, happy belated birthday. Thank you. Thank you. 24. Um, getting up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I can't even catch my breath. I'm about to be 36. So I'm like, girl, just you wait. Girl, I twisted my ankle early in the summer, child, and it didn't heal until the end of the summer. So that that starts happening in your 30s, by the way. <laughs> just, just FYI. <laughs> It's okay. You could be outside in the fall too. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. Uh, well, here's the thing. I am so excited to chat with you. I'm so excited to get to know you better. I honestly came to know you on Instagram. I was minding my business on Instagram. You know, I follow a lot of music pages. Um, I'm a music lover. Um, I, I love jazz. I grew up on jazz, love jazz especially. Um, mm-hmm. And I love a unique voice that just makes me stop and say, wait a minute, who is that? And that's how I was introduced to you. And I've been hooked ever since. And to watch your ascension, um, mm-hmm. And to see the grace uh, and the inner joy and peace that you've carried with you throughout this, I mean, what I'm sure is just a wild but beautiful journey of your life has been incredibly wonderful to witness. And again, like I said, you know, this pod is all about celebrating the trials that lead to the triumphs. Um, mm-hmm. And in that, we just learn more about you. So welcome again. Thank you. Let's start with some icebreaker questions. Are you down? I'm down. I'm down. Who are some of your um, female jazz inspirations? I don't know. Um, I would say currently Mm -hmm. um, inspired by a wonderful uh, singer named Cecile McLaurin-Salvant. 
and Jasmia Horn as well. I adore uh, both of their styles because mm. it's wonderful that being in jazz, you can have a you can have a style. It's not like everybody fits into the same yes. sound, the same yes, 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 same aesthetic, you know. Um, and so I love their the individuality of their styles, of their compositions, um, in their voices, and I would say inspirations that I've had over the past couple of years, in addition to them, would be Betty Carter and mm. Sarah Vaughn. Yes. And Layla Hathaway. Yeah. <laughs> ah, this is so good. Yeah. I um I grew up on Sarah Vaughn. Sarah Vaughn's one of my dad's favorite singers. Um mm. so I love that you said her. She's just a special, yeah. special one. How would you describe your style? Ooh. That might be the first time anybody's ever asked me that. And this oh, is why. Really? Okay. <laughs> um, but I would describe my style as um I don't know if multi multifaceted. I would say I have uh um roots and foundation in in gospel music um because of my grandparents. Uh who had a, a group in Philadelphia called the Savets um, or Savets. I would say um, I got my love for Motown and, and soul from my mom and dad. Um, mm -hmm. They were, I, I was watching soul train reruns with them. Like, mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm like, so that that's another element of, of my style and I guess my sound. Um, and more recently, recent as of like five, six years ago, um, listening to jazz, I think that's where I kind of acquired uh, the sophisticated side of it. So I would say that my style uh, musically um, would be gospel rooted um, pop and R&B. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know. I would say I, I get my influences. I draw influences from a lot of different people. So I want to wrap it up, but um, gospel rooted, um, but jazz kind of helped me refine and, and find my voice. Yeah, I love that. As you were talking, I was like, um, you know, it, it gives me like jazz soul. Like mm. it's almost like it's um, everything you said, like all of all of the foundation that you have really very much so comes through um, in, in your vocal performance. And so I, if I were to describe it, if someone were to ask me, I would say it's like jazz soul. That's what it gives me. I love that. Okay, well, let's let's go to your beginnings. What did the Bronx give you? Bronx. I feel like it gave me access, uh, uh, which might be contrary to what people believe about it or about, you know, other places in New York. I was able to go to a school and have an arts pr program, you know, where I could participate in musical theater. I could participate in um, choral classes and doing solos for the first time and um, and I pretty much, I mean, I went to the school in the Bronx public school until high school, uh, until college. Um, mm -hmm. And so all of the opportunities that I've had, you know, to go into the city and see Broadway shows for $10 and like, you know, I wasn't allowed in the clubs. I was, I was too young, but, <laughs> you know, still <laughs> to, to, um, to see, you know, music in the street, music all around me, you know, in the store, um, it, it, it definitely gave me a sense of awareness about what I would like to do. You know, just having all of those opportunities, um, mainly, mainly in school and because of great educators in the, in the public school system. Um, it gave me the, the, the freedom to, to dream of, you know, pursuing a career in music. Tell me, Samar, do you remember the moment <clears throat> when you were like, okay, I love this. Not I like this, not I'm good at this, mm -hmm. but I love this. What was that moment? Hmm. Where, where singing is concerned, I remember very vividly listening to um, singers like Kim Burrell and mm -hmm. Layla Hathaway and like Kiki Sheard and just being so captivated by the way that they sang, you know? And I don't know if I really was thinking too much about control or about wanting to like 
practice it or anything, but I was just, I was just captivated. I was like, wow, how do they do that? And how can Mm -hmm. I do that? And so I would spend hours like listening over and over again to, to their voices and to their inflections and, and to, you know, the depth of their voices, how, how I wanted to have that depth, you know, that warmth. Um, And that's when I realized that I love singing because I was just, I was obsessed with the details and it's, I can't do great impressions, but like just obsessed with the details of, of what makes this singer different than this singer mm-hmm. and um, how I could apply both of those things to my voice if I wanted to. Like I have the option because I, I can, you know, and, not, and it, it doesn't necessarily come out because I decide I'm going to click, I'm going to turn on the switch, you know, for my Kimberell bag or like my little, <laughs> <laughs> it does not work like that, but, <laughs> but because I've absorbed, I absorbed at least at that time, um, their sounds, you know, it, it, it came out, started to come out gradually nat- and naturally or naturally mm-hmm. gradually. Um, and, um, so that's when I realized I love singing. However, <laughs> I wasn't sure I wanted to pursue a career in it, honestly, because I was like, even though I love this, I'm not sure if, um, if I have what it takes, the grind, the, the team, the individuality, I'm not sure that I have, I'm imitating everybody, you know, I don't, I'm not sure that I have what it takes to like stand out, you know? Mm. And and I, I'd seen, you know, even members of my own family pursuing those dreams as well, kind of to no avail. Like it just never seemed to break out in the way that they desire to. Um, And I didn't, I guess I didn't want to experience, even though they don't seem disappointed, they still love it. I just didn't, I felt like I was like, I want to prevent experiencing maybe any sort of disappointment. Of course. That kind of thing. So um, I I knew I loved to sing, but I was unsure about pursuing a career. But then when I got to college and I was introduced to jazz, that made me like, okay, I love this. Even though I'm not sure what this will lead to, I know I love this and I know that no matter what, I'm going to do the best that I can to learn and to develop my voice so that when the opportunity comes, I can express myself as fully as I'm able, as I want to. Wow. Okay. So it was once you were in college that you were like, that's what the turn was a little bit like, okay, maybe Mm -hmm. this can be my lane as far as pursuing this potentially as a career. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. I could be all of it. Like I could, I could have my uh, R and B and gospel and Motown. I could have all of those influences mm-hmm. folding it as into that into that musical identity, and it could all just be me. Like I didn't have to choose a lane, yes. you know. And they're all saturated with so many wonderful singers, but I felt like I didn't have to choose. Like, okay, I'm going to go the gospel route. I'm going to go the R and B route. I sing jazz. I can. I can. I, it's all me, you know. It's not like I'm I'm putting on uh, a hat, a fake hat, you know. It's like I'm in my jazz bag, take it off. I don't want, you know. It's all me. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's what I like. Um, before I get more into like your career trajectory, I want to go back to your family. I want to talk about your mom. What's mm-hmm. something that your mom has? Maybe just a blessing, a lesson, something that she's in, imparted upon you that's really stuck with you. Um, all these years, especially as you pursue um, your career? Hmm. I would say that my mom is a very spiritual person. She's a very faithful person. Um, When I lived at home, she was always listening to sermons. She was always praying for us. She was, she's like one of the most caring people that I know. Um, And so Above all else, the the main lesson that I take from her, just watching her, um, and even the things that she's that she said to me is like, keep keep um, it's like stay stay aware, you know, have a plan, but also involve God in everything that you do. Mm. You know, if you if you have concerns about it, don't be afraid to ask me, but pray about it. You know. Mm don't try to do it all on your own because she can, she can also tell very quickly when I'm getting overwhelmed. Yes. Um, and when I feel like, you know, 
I can't talk to anybody because it's just I'm around too many people all the time. And sometimes I just kind of retreat. And so she's like, don't don't allow, you know, the stresses of your life. They're new, you know, and you have to adjust and adapt to them, but don't allow them to um, overtake you. You know, still Mm -hmm. don't be afraid to 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 pray, to ask for help, to take things one thing, one step at a time um, and continue to grow spiritually so that, you know, no matter what issues or problems come your way, you have you have the answer. Yeah, that's good. Keep God in all that you do and always mm-hmm. go to him first. That's that's mm-hmm. great advice. Advice we'll need for all of our days. So way to go, mom. Shout out to mom. That's that's <laughs> really good. It. Yeah. Um Okay, so I want to talk more about your time at college. Um mm-hmm. how did you choose where you decided to go? Um what's what about your college experience really prepares you for where you are today? I chose where I wanted to go primarily based on uh, financial constraints. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and where did you attend? I went to a state school called SUNY Purchase. Mm-hmm. Um, and I realized that um, I did not have the resources to to apply and audition to bigger schools. I knew I didn't want to be away from home. Um, and... Thankfully, I got the best of both worlds, you know, having campus experience, being close to home and having a really dedicated like uh, group of professors who it's like it was like it was a close enough knit community within the the music department, you know, that you didn't feel like you were just lost in a sea of, you know, students and numbers and ID ID numbers, that kind of thing. Mm-hmm. You know, you actually built relationships with the professors. And so, um, yeah, during that time, I mean, I I had, I just kind of had like a, I don't want to say a culture shock, but I was just like, whoa, you know, there's this whole community of musicians who are surrounding this genre that I have never encountered before. And, um, you know, I got to start just like I've been listening to Kim Burrell and Layla and, and um, Kier Sheard all my life and absorbing that sound. Now I have the opportunity to absorb something that's completely unfamiliar to me um, and see if I can do it kind of, you know, it was like a fun, it was like, it was, it, I loved it just because I love the music in general, but it was also a fun challenge for me. It's like, you know, having, having a range in my voice, having, having the ability to decide what I wanted, having control over my voice. Um, And um, yeah, I think, the training side of it, the community aspect as far as playing with other musicians is concerned. Um, having to also, because I think school, a lot of times you have to make the best of it because there are elements of it that maybe aren't um, as refined as you'd like them to be. Um, and so you have to take it upon yourself to uh, to uh, seek out your education and and realize that okay, I'm in school right now, I'm in class, but I'm building towards something else. You know, I'm Mm -hmm. like these listening to these albums, listening to these singers, getting this training. It's not just for a grade, it's for life, you know? And so having that mindset and having those resources and understanding that really, you know, the peers that I have in school are still going to be the peers that I reach out to in, in, in the music community at large, um, it really helped me to be where I guess I am today, you know, being able to stand up on stage and, and be a leader versus like mm. my, experience, my only experience with that was in church. And it was like singing a couple songs here and there, sharing the mic, being in choir, that kind of thing. So like actually stepping into the role of like leading a band of musicians, leading my, my own career, you know, being, being steadfast in that way, being, being, uh, strong, you know, and being confident in who I am and what I have to offer. Um, all of those came, all of those lessons kind of came from being in mm-hmm. school. Do you have like a, a tribe of friends that you're still very much connected to from, from your time in college? Yes. Mm. <laughs> We're neighbors now kind of, um, oh. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I live in, I live in, um, 
Harlem now and I can like take the train a couple stops, you know, and, and see my friends. We meet up, you know, if somebody's playing in the, in the city that we want to hear, somebody's in town, we go together. Like mm. I'm, I'm glad, you know, I always wondered being uh, an introvert. I always wondered what my group of friends would look like and it's still growing, but I'm very glad to, to have the group of friends that I have now. Um, and the fact that we still stayed connected yeah. musically and after college. Yeah, no, some of my best friends in the entire world I met at college and we're still mm-hmm. friends uh, approaching 20 years later. So, you know, it is, it's so, it's so true. Like you meet these people and, you know, we've gone on to have careers and children and husbands and wives. And I mean, just all sorts of things in life have has have happened, but there's something about that time in your life when you're bonding with people, when you're on the precipice of so much and so much um, of what you don't even know was on the other side of your life. But you have these people that are willing to do it with you and are supporting you all the way through because as you continue to win all of the awards and get and have all of the success, what's always going to continue to mean th- the most is to look back at those people who knew you before you had those things. So I'm grateful that, that you have that now. That's a blessing for sure. It is. It is. (laughs) So when did it change? And what I mean by change is like, when did it go from like, I'm Samara, I'm in college, I'm singing my songs, I'm stepping up as a leader now. I can perform with the band behind me by myself. When did it change to like, okay, now I have a deal. Now I'm on tour. Now I'm making money. Like when, what was that? <laughs> what was that like switch, that turn? Mm. There was a couple of turning points. Okay, I, let's hear I, them. Participated, I participated in my junior year in a competition um, at New Jersey Performing Arts Center called the Sarah Vaughan International Competition. Um, I won. I met uh, the manager that I now work with through that competition. Um, then the following year was the pandemic. So I wasn't, you know, I wasn't thinking about an album. I wasn't thinking about any of that junior year. Um, then I, another turning point was I got the Ella Fitzgerald scholarship at my school. Um, and so even though we were at home, my professor at the time encouraged us to encourage me to do a video singing an Ella song, you know, like, and thanking the foundation, Ella Fitzgerald Foundation for the scholarship. And that, it was on Facebook. I hadn't posted on Instagram or TikTok or anything. It was on Facebook. And it got, it got like 4 million views in in four days, Mm. August of 2020, I remember. And I was just like, what's, what's going on? (laughs) Like, (laughs) like, you know, Um, and I started to GoFundMe because there were people that were like, where's your project? Where's your album? Like, what's, what, you need to be recording. And I was like, I wasn't thinking about it yet. I haven't graduated. I'm about to go into my senior year, you know? Um, but started to go fund me to get, and, and use all, both the winnings from the Sarah Vaughan competition and the funds from the GoFundMe to record my first album and own it, you know, because paid, we paid for it and own it before uh, going to an, uh, an independent label and, um, signing with them, licensing it to them. And that's pretty much when the team started to form. Like I started, I had a, I got a booking agent in the States and a booking agent in Europe. And it was like, well, this is your first album. This is senior year, 2020. We're going into 2021. You're graduating in May by July. We'll have the album out, you know, we'll tour in the fall. You know, it was like, it was, it was like that. Like October of 2020, I recorded my first album. I was still in school. Wow. After graduation, released it, went on tour for the first time, January of 2022. It was like, okay, you know, that first album did pretty well. Now it's time for the second one. Recorded it in two days, paid for it. A couple wait, months later. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Mm-mm, gotta go back, gotta go back, gotta go back. Did you say you were, <laughs> wait, did you say you recorded the album in two days? Two days. Kid you not. Was that due we to time like- constraints? Was that just due to the juices were flowing? Like what? I mean, I, that was my second experience in the studio. So I just thought that was what we was doing. Like I had the songs I wanted to do. It was seven songs. 
the first day. And I think we did maybe six the next day or something like that. Um, and it was just like, yeah, let's just go for it. And, and made sure once again, that it was paid for before, instead of having the label pay for it and have some, you know, creative, like, Mm-hmm. Input something and just like here's a product. Do you want it? Yes. Okay. And then <laughs> and um so we signed with uh Verve Records under the Universal Music Group umbrella. Um released it a couple months after that. Then I got my first Grammy nomination two months later. And I was already touring like crazy throughout this time, keep in mind. So um yeah. <laughs> okay. I don't <laughs> even know. <laughs> it's a- where was the break? I don't know. I don't know. Well, yeah, well, that makes sense because you're like, what, you started with like, so there were a few things that happened and you were not lying. There were many, many, many things that happened. It's a whirlwind. Okay. So uh, what I want to know now is, did you immediately feel comfortable touring or was that something that, that kind of you grew into becoming comfortable in? Oh, uh, yeah, I had to grow into it. I I didn't imagine, I couldn't have imagined being on a plane this much. Mm-hmm. And so when I first, when I went on my first tour, it was like two weeks, two and a half weeks or something. Um, in Europe, I was like, oh, this is crazy. Like, <laughs> I'm seeing all these places for the first time. There's different cultures. I'm trying to learn songs in the different languages for the, for the, you know, the country that I'm going to. I'm mm. like, this is just, it's just crazy. Like this is wild. Now I've definitely I'm I'm still overwhelmed by it, but I'm more acclimated to, you know, what tour is like. Like I know that the most fun part of it is going to be the gig. It's just mm-hmm. everything surrounding that is what's over like tiring about it. Like the lobby calls and you know uh short it's like well sometimes we'll arrive the day of kind of off no sleep and have to go right to sound check and you know so yeah i've got i've gotten pretty used to it and i think that i have good uh road uh travel uh like i i know i'm like okay make sure you have your passport wallet keys suitcase mm. <laughs> don't leave anything in the room like make sure you pack the night before so you're not rushing the next day that kind of thing set like 17 alarms so you wake up um but it's been fun you know i i mm. like Every day, I'm so grateful that I get to call this like what I like. This is what I do. Yeah. Like I went from the classroom to mm. actually like real life pursuing this, you know, on the go. So, yeah, I'm grateful. Was there ever a, a moment when, and and the answer may be no, but was there ever a moment when you were like really overwhelmed and were like, I actually. I don't know if I want to do this in this way, or I'm scared. Um, what and if so, what was that moment like? Yes. Well, yeah. um, <laughs> I, um, like I mentioned before, my mom has always told me that I get very overwhelmed very easily. Mm-hmm. Um, and the nominations were one thing. The nominations were one thing. November of 2022. Um was excited. Everybody around me was excited. It was like, you're going to get a girl, you know, people I haven't heard from in forever. It's like, you, <laughs> I, you, you got, you got it in the bag. Okay. You know? And I was just like, okay, I'm just, we're going to see what happens. You know, I'm going to yeah. go. It's going to be exciting. I'm going to see all these celebrities. Like it's going to be a good time. Right. Yeah. Actually winning. Oh, I was like, oh my gosh. It was, it was like, first of all, I was like, I can't believe that I'm up on this stage and like Jay Z, Beyonce, Taylor Swift, SZA, all these people <laughs> are standing in front of me. Adele, Lizzo. Like I was like, I don't know what to say. <laughs> I really don't know what to say. And I'm glad I don't have my glasses on because I can't see none of y'all for real. <laughs> but I really don't know what to say. <laughs> so after that, you know, I kind of got a glimpse into like I feel like what, what every what what's what the next couple of years are going to be like. I don't mm. know. It's just, like, whoa, I'm stepping into a whole nother world. Like this is, woo, it don't even feel real. Like all these people are like real people. Um, and so a couple months after that, I remember um, looking at my schedule and looking at things that I had booked the year before, not 
knowing that there would be demand for more things. Like it was like, mm. okay, the schedule is set up so that we're touring next year. I'm working consistently. Um, but I didn't think I was like, okay, not only are people who I've already booked like venues and promoters that I've already booked with, like, please don't cancel. But there's also others that are like, please come here, you know? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and it's just like a lot, a lot of requests to field. And so at one point I was just like, wow, I don't know. It, it was April. It's like February was the Grammys. And by April, I was like, yeah, I need to. I April need to this year of this year. This yeah. Year, I need to stop because, you know, I'm feeling the fatigue in my body and my mm. mind and my voice. Like, I'm just like, I'm not a machine, you know, I can't, mm -hmm. I can't just go like this. And I'm, and I'm not only am I not a machine, but I'm also kind of like a little, a little bit of a people pleaser. So I want to make mm -hmm. sure that everybody gets their equal, you know, part of what I have to offer and everything, but I can't do that. So yeah, I had that point. And thankfully because of, um, and I'm learning how to communicate better as well. Mm -hmm. um, people who are, open-minded and people who are genuinely on my side, on my team and, and, um, on, you know, the label side of things, like I'm able now to look at next year and be like, okay, we can take a moderate step back. I'm not saying stop, you know, yeah, take a year off or anything like that, but really just, you know, make sure that there's balance because we can prepare, 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 but like we were not prepared for the response. I was not prepared to win. I was not prepared to, mm -hmm. you know, have this new kind of like all, all these eyes on me, all of these, you know, different music industry people, you know, who are aware of me now and who want to, you know, I wasn't, I wasn't prepared for that. And so it was very, very tough to, to, um, very tough to try to deal with, I guess. Yeah. Well, also, feeling very grateful and blessed. And, you know, it's like, I think it's that juxtaposition sometimes that like, it's tough for us when you're feeling extreme fatigue in the midst of a really big blessing. At times it can make us feel guilty. Like yeah. I shouldn't be feeling this way. Who am I to feel this way when God gave me everything that I wanted, right? But um, you're also still human. And and we get tired and we get exhausted and we become overwhelmed. It's okay. And both can exist. You can be grateful and tired mm -hmm. and need a break. It's and so I'm happy that you've you've at, at a young age really have been able to um understand that for yourself. I think that's that's a good thing. It's gonna it's gonna take you very far. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, I'm so a Grammy too. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I as soon as I got them. Well, my I got them delivered to uh, or sent to my parents' house, mm. and I went over and I was like looking at them. I was like, "This is crazy." I took like a couple of videos with them. I was like, <laughs> you know, um, what did your not, parents do? How did they react? I mean, my dad was like screaming, like, he was like <laughs> oh, "Nobody touch it! Nobody touch it! Just look! Just look!" You know? Yeah, they're very excited, very excited, and I mean, mm. they're just. My parents are just the sweetest people, you know, they're like, they, you know, favor is all on your life. We're praying mm -hmm. for you. We're here for you. You know, we're proud of you. This is, uh, yeah. 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 How do you practice self-care, Samara? How do you, and also how do you take care of your voice? I'm curious yeah. as someone who also uses my voice a lot and always has I always loved to know how, um, people take care of their voice. Well, I think another part of touring that I've realized, uh, or, or that I've, I've another aspect of touring that I that I realize is really important is diet and mm. uh, like overall health because I find that it's like if I'm traveling, I haven't eaten, I'm sleeping on planes all day and stuff. Then by the time I get to the hotel or by the time I get to the venue, I'm like dehydrated and exhausted. So it's yeah. like taking care, making sure that you're hydrated, making sure that you're eating as well as you possibly can on the road and in life in general is all crucial to vocal health. Mm -hmm. um, and obviously, you know, warm ups that I've uh, acquired from my voice teachers, I look up a lot of classical 
because I love I love the way that classical singers they can sing pretty much without amplification mm-hmm. and their voices are full and they're not it's not like they're singing from their throat they have support and they know how to use their air similar yes. to music um so uh yeah that maintenance in that way but I think vocal health is like okay diet exercise um practical things like warming up um stretching that kind of thing mm-hmm. I, I yeah I try when I'm on the road my self-care is like thrifting and it shouldn't Ooh. be shopping but I love thrifting I love going to different places at vintage shops or you know jewelry stores or like you know just like any kind of like secondhand yeah. kind of that's something I like on my days off that's what I do for me you know just because that's I love. cool what else do you want to do Hmm. What other dreams do you have? Um, I feel like I might be a bit predictable um, <laughs> in saying this, but like <laughs> I, I dream most of all of being able to um, make an impact in whatever way that means. So like whether it's, taking my family on tour with me, Mm. whether it's maybe starting a camp of my own in Harlem or in the Bronx where I can have uh, students uh, come in maybe during the the summer to come in and continue learning music and and practice so they they can be better for the fall when they go back to school, whether it's being a part of a fashion campaign. Yes, I I was hoping you would say that. I saw you Which, did a little sum with theory. I saw that. Yes. I little, my first, my first, you know, my first dip mm-hmm. into uh, the fashion <laughs> realm. Um, <laughs> they, they had me dressed. They had me dressed. They sure. did have you dressed. They did. Yes. Okay, Shout out well. to theory. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I definitely, I hope to do a lot of that more and be able to express myself in that way as well. Um, mm-hmm. I think most of all, it's like music and singing it's just the way that i can communicate the way that i can express my most authentic self to people and i'm so glad that people have responded in the way that they have because you know i was talking to somebody before and it's like the byproduct of this this dream that i'm currently living in is like all of these unexpected accolades and awards and stuff like that but the goal really was to just express myself as authentically as I can through music and reach people, you know, and have people feel what I'm trying to express, you know? Yeah. Um, So the fact that I'm already doing that and not only am I doing it, but it has the potential to grow so much and I have the potential to, you know, go as many different directions as I want to, you know, and have supporters, you know, who, who um, have encountered me one way or another, social media, TikTok, live. You know, people come up to me, this is their first jazz show. They never heard me, mm-hmm. never heard of any, you know, anything that I do, but they're coming out, you know? So I, it this dream that I'm living in now is like one that I feel like is continuing, it's going to continue to uh, evolve. Um, yes. In addition to the other dreams that I have surrounding my family and surrounding um, sharing what I've learned with others. Yeah, I love that. And if I could just impart any big sister advice, it would just be continue to not put your side, yourself inside of a box. Mm-hmm. You're uncontainable. You will do all of those things that you said and so much more. When something else pops up in your spirit that you're like, I didn't know I wanted to do this, do it. Don't mm-hmm. fight it. Don't deny it. When an opportunity comes your way that that is seemingly out of left field, but feels right inside, say yes, you know, because that is going to give you the life that you are always meant to live. And you'll continue to inspire people through all of these different, you know, jut offs of your, of your life and your career, because truthfully, you know, your voice and the music is the catalyst for so much more. Um, Mm -hmm. And I'm so excited to see what all of those things are going to be. I can't wait to be in a fashion campaign together. Mm. You know, come on, let's get our theory on. Let's get our theory on. Yes, That's, I love that. Let's really get our thrift on. 
Let's get our thrift on though. Yes. Okay. I'm thrifting. <laughs> it's funny. I'm going to New York actually this week and I'm like, maybe I'll pop in a thrift store when I'm in New York. <gasps> Yeah. You never, know find. you never know what you'll find. Never know what I'm going to find. Tell me, what has been your takeaway from our conversation today? Hmm. Self reflection is necessary. I mm. think that's, you know, reflecting on my influences, reflecting on my family, reflecting on where I've been and where I want to go in this short time. It's important because I feel like I don't have a lot of time to do that currently because I'm always looking forward and looking at what's to come, what's to come, what's to come, what's happening tomorrow, what's happening the day after that, you know, more like a day-to-day schedule. And so actually having time to reflect um, is very necessary. Mm -hmm. My takeaway is, um, you know, just looking at you, just chatting with you, just remembering when I was in like my early mid twenties and like all of the dreams that I had and all of the hope that I had to be where I am today. Mm -hmm. And, um, it's just such a reminder that like God did exactly what he said he would do. He did. Mm -hmm. He did. And, it, in a lot of ways, it looks different than I thought it would, but it looks better than I could have imagined. And I'm so excited to see um, where you are in 10 years. I'm excited to see where you are tomorrow. Mm-hmm. But with with the knowing and with the confidence that you are not going to put yourself in that box, like I said, and you're going to keep saying yes to the things that you know instinctively you're supposed to say yes to. And I just can't wait to see where where, where you're where you're headed. And I just want you to know I'll be supporting you all the way. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. And thank you so much for this opportunity. It's been such a pleasure. I'm coming to you live 8, 8 11 p.m. in Madrid, yes. Spain. Oh, <laughs> one of my favorite countries. Thank you so much for doing a nighttime interview. Yes. <laughs> I appreciate you so much, sis, and I'm wishing you all the best. And I can't wait to see you in person. Thank you. Thank you. I'm looking forward to <laughs> performing at Morgan State also on this tour. So in DMV. Oh, yes. That's where I'm from. I'm from the DMV. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. But, Have you done Howard? Have you been at Howard yet? Have you performed at Howard? No, I haven't. I haven't. I would love to. You I've seen the home. I've never been to a homecoming. <gasps> I wish I was to to see you, but it looked like fun. I'm, it I, is. I, you I, will. Oh. It's coming. Just trust. <laughs> yeah. You will. It looks like fun. Yes. <laughs> thank you so much. We did thank it. You. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for listening. This podcast is produced by LWC Studios for OWN. The show's executive producer is Juleka Lantigua. Our managing producer is Fatima Al Swiffy. Shanice Tyndall is our lead producer. Associate producer is Mona Hassan. Jordan Thompson is our marketing coordinator. This episode was mixed by Trin Lightburn. Michelle Baker is our video editor. If you enjoyed listening to this episode, and we hope you did, please make sure to subscribe, leave a rating, and review wherever you listen to your podcast to ensure you hear the next one.